everybody, this is Dream, and today we have a 10-game Major League Baseball slate. Main slate starts at 1 p.m. today, so do keep that in mind. That's Eastern Time. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the slate. I have some core plays with William Contreras, Tommy Edmond, and uh, Toscar Hernandez on DraftKings. And over on FanDuel, we have Edmond, Hernandez, and Kyle Schwarber. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to Kevin A. He he had a Vladimir Guerrero Jr. home run call yesterday. He did very good on that one. So uh, let's go ahead and get some more today. Uh, drop a comment below. Um, let me know who your home run call is, and if you uh, get it right, I will get one right. I will uh, shout it out in the video tomorrow. Uh, so do keep that in mind. Uh, with that said, let's get into this slate itself here. So we're gonna start with our pitchers here on DraftKings. So uh, Max Serger is the top option available as when it comes to a strikeout guy uh he's also fairly expensive today and he has an ugly matchup against the dodgers uh but he does have the best k rate on the slate and as, if he can get a bunch of k's then that would help uh curb some of the potential earned runs that he would get out, give up here uh he should lead to a decent score here though he's had a little bit of an up and down to start the season um he had uh you know a good and a bad game and then a really bad game and so I don't know that uh, I love him today, but he definitely has some utility. Uh, but I think there's other places we can go that we can save money and not have to like utilize him or, or the risk involved. Uh, the next guy we're going to look at is Justin Steele here. Now he's had a really good start to the season, including against some really good teams. And so that's a good sign here. And he has one of the easiest matchups on the slate against Oakland. Um, his price is okay here on, Fan on DraftKings. It's actually really expensive on FanDuel. Uh, my bigger concern with him is that he doesn't get the strikeout rate. And last year he had a couple games <coughs> uh, where he had really good strikeouts, but he didn't. Uh, he wasn't uh, consistent with that throughout the season. So it is. Um, he does feel somewhat risky here. But he does have an easy matchup, so he's definitely viable here. And you you have a really good uh, value set on this slate, so I think he's definitely rosterable here on DraftKings. Um, and then we're going to look at Charlie Morton uh, for Atlanta, and he's got a really good opportunity here to have a really solid game. He started the season kind of in the middle, but he has some nice upside here, and he has some potential to have a good game. I think he's a great P2 option with Steel or with Scherzer if you want. Uh, but he's not as cheap as I'd like him to be. I wish he was a little bit cheaper, more like Alex Cobb, who's just a little bit less expensive and has just as much upside. Uh, he started the season pretty well with two good games and then, or two average games and then a bad game against the Dodgers. But again, everybody has a bad game against the Dodgers at times. Uh, the risk here is the strikeouts as well, similar to uh, Steele uh, and Morton for that matter. But they're both, uh, all three of those guys are good P2 options. Or even a P1 option in Steel, and then having one of Cobb or Morton. Um, I think that they all have some viability here. But there is some high risk, high reward in all of them. And, you know, because they uh, don't have the strikeout rate that guys like Scherzer have. Uh, who could give him, a, you know, a bigger boost here. But overall, I do think the pitching is kind of difficult today. Uh, but there's plenty of value. So you can mix and match your pitchers however you want. And that will help you fill out a good lineup. And then we're going to go ahead and get a catchers, and I'm going to start with William Contreras. Uh, he has not hit a home run yet to start the season, uh, but he's hitting the ball pretty well, and he's getting fancy points in most games. Uh, he hasn't had a big game yet, but he is somewhat due for that, and if he does start today, he looks like a really good position to potentially break that finally. He had a really good year last year with, when it comes to home runs as well, so he's definitely capable of it. Uh, Salvador Perez. For Kansas City, looks like he's in a really good spot here. Uh, he hasn't been hitting the ball particularly well. But he's got a good matchup, and he's definitely worth the consideration if you can pay up for him. And then Wilson Contreras, he had a really big game yesterday, having a, uh, having a home run or two in a game against Arizona. And uh, while he has been kind of inconsistent throughout the season to start when it comes to hitting, he is hitting the ball really well the last uh, three games. He's had six hits. So I do think he's got some viability on the slate. And he's not extra, he's not overtly expensive. He's a good uh, he's a good uh, contrarian to William Contreras. So um, then we're gonna get at first base, and we're gonna start with Paul Goldschmidt, who just jumps off the table today as a great option. Uh, he had a home run yesterday, and he's got great potential again today to do that. Uh, the risk here is is that he's so expensive, he's gonna be somewhat hard to roster, depending on how you go with your pitching. But he definitely has some utility here. Uh, Dan Vogelbach is a very good uh, value option on the slate, and while he's been a little bit inconsistent 
throughout the start of the season, he does have home run power, and he has some potential here to have a really solid game. And so with his price being so cheap, he's definitely viable on the slate. And then uh, Carlos Santana. Uh, oops. Santana. Uh, for Pittsburgh, he's had a really good uh, effort here in Colorado, and I look for that to continue here. And his price is still cheap enough that he's viable on the slate. I don't think he's a must-play by any stretch of the imagination, but if you want to go at Pittsburgh stack, he would be one guy to utilize. Another guy to utilize would be at second base is, is uh, Castro uh, for Pittsburgh. Um, he can actually play shortstop or second base, which also gives him a nice bonus. And he's hitting the ball extremely well. He's had some really good games against Colorado already this year, or one game already this year, and he's had some really good games throughout the season. And uh, he definitely has home run potential in this situation. Uh, Luis Arias also has some nice upside here for Miami. If you want to uh, load up against uh, Cobb, who I actually think is a pretty decent pitcher today, he's definitely somebody you could uh, do it with. Uh, he's been hitting the ball extremely well. The really risk with him is is that he doesn't seem to have a ton of uh, great fantasy games. He's had three or four games over 12 fantasy points on the season so far. And so he's getting on base, but he's, uh, you know, the Marlins are not a great team when it comes to scoring. So uh, he might be getting on base, but he doesn't really get steals or anything. And he's not getting many RBIs either, which is a disappointment when you're hitting the ball so well. Uh, but he's definitely viable on the slate because of the hitting potential. Uh, and then Ryan McMahon for Colorado, he looks like he's in a really solid spot here. He's much better at home than he is on the road. And if you look at the difference between his batting average, 310 to 129 at home versus the road. He's also got home run potential in this one. And he had a pretty good game yesterday with two hits and two doubles. So I do think he's viable here. His price is a little bit pricey though, but he's definitely viable. And then finally Jeff McNeil at second base. Uh, he could also play in the outfield, and he's priced pretty fairly here. He hasn't hit a home run yet this season, but he's actually uh, getting some good games here in, in the last couple of ones. So I do think he's viable on the slate. He's a little bit more risky, but he's a good value play. At third base, Nolan Arenado obviously has some big-time potential here. Though he is expensive, so he is going to be somewhat harder to roster. He is viable, and he's a good alternative to having an expensive play at this position. Um, Austin Riley is also a good option. Uh, he's hitting the ball extremely well, and he's got four home runs in the last, uh, you know, over the season to start. And he's got a really good matchup here, so I really like him a lot. Um, then we're going to look at uh, Eugenio Suarez for Seattle. Uh, he looks like a really good value play here, and he's hitting the ball pretty solidly, and he's got great me metrics for this situation. So I really think he's got some viability uh, and have more potential here. Um, and then Cabrian Hayes uh, for Pittsburgh. If you go with the Pittsburgh stack, he'll be another guy you could utilize. His batting average leaves a lot to be desired, but he's had four straight games over uh, 12 fantasy points. Uh, and he's had some, he's had actually a lot of good ones. So he's hitting the ball pretty well the last few games. And he's got a nice matchup here in Colorado. And he also has the bonus that he can get a steal occasionally if he can get on base. So he definitely has some viability here. And now in the shortstop, you could obviously put Rodolfo Castro here as well. Uh, but I really think Tommy Edmond is the way to go today. Um, he's been uh, hitting the ball okay to start the season. He hasn't had a ton of big games, but the metrics just jump off the page for him today. And so he's a really great option on the slate. And then we're going to look in the outfield, and we're going to start with Toscar Hernandez. Now, he's pretty expensive, but he has got some nice home run potential in this matchup. And his price is actually reduced from what it's been, probably because he hasn't been hitting the ball extremely well. Uh, but this situation just gives me a lot of vibes that he's going to have a really solid game. A.J. Pollock is also looking really solid for Seattle. Uh, despite the fact that he's started the season not hitting the ball well at all, uh, he does have a couple good games, and so... Uh, I do think he's viable on the slate. He's high risk, high reward, and obviously you want to make sure he's drawing the start. Uh, then we're looking at Corbin Carroll, who I really like today for Arizona. Uh, he's hitting the ball extremely solidly, and he's having a lot of good uh, fantasy point games throughout the season to start. And so he's definitely viable on the slate with a plus matchup. Uh, Dylan Carlson is also very interesting for St. Louis. Now, he has not hit the ball particularly well to start the season. He's also not played a ton of games because he's been kind of hurt a couple times. Uh, but uh, but uh, I do think he's got some really good opportunity here to have a solid uh, uh, game here. 
and uh, his metrics, you know, jump off the charts right here. Um, Jeff McNeil also is at second base as well. He's a guy you can also play out here. But uh, his teammate, uh, Mark Canha, is a good, uh, you know, kind of a uh, contrarian play for your uh, GPPs. He has some nice upside here. He's high risk, high reward. And then finally, Connor Joe uh, for Pittsburgh. If you want to do the Pittsburgh stack and he draws a start, he will be somebody that you can uh, definitely take a look at as a good Pittsburgh option. Uh, there's definitely some good options uh, at Pittsburgh, and he's definitely one of them with his batting average being pretty solid. So uh, with that said, uh, you know, your top uh, kind of stacks today are St. Louis and, you know, uh, Pittsburgh and Seattle. I think all three of those teams have really good stackability today. Um, then we're going to get over here to FanDuel, and we're going to go ahead and, uh, you know, when it comes to pitching, um, I would think, I would say to stay away from Max Serger so much on FanDuel, despite the fact he gets a lot of uh, strikeouts, his price makes it pretty hard to roster him, uh, especially with Justin Steele being more expensive. Um, he's also going to be hard to roster today, but he's got the best upside on the slate uh, and the easiest matchup when it comes to that. Uh, he's still a little bit risky, but I do think he has some upside on the situation. Um, then Charlie Morton, uh, he's kind of a good contrarian option, though his price is not ideal here. It makes him kind of hard to roster on this particular site just because he's not cheap enough to really help you pay up for a bunch of other guys. And then Alex Cobb, um, who has some uh, interesting upside on the slate. He's cheap enough that he's very viable here and definitely worth taking a look at. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and get in our catchers and first baseman. And uh, I do think that on this site, you're going to be able to utilize the prices of the uh, batters to really mix and match whoever you want almost because there doesn't seem like anybody's overpriced here and paul goldschmidt starts off as a really great option he's definitely somebody you can get in your roster i think a st louis stack is definitely viable here on FanDuel, and he's definitely somebody that i really like and want to roster if i can fit him in and his price is pretty fair for his potential here uh, william Contreras is also great on the slate for uh, FanDuel. He's also 2600 bucks, and you can throw him in that utility spot if you can fit in Goldschmidt, too. He seems like a really good option for that. Uh, Salvador Perez does have some nice upside in this matchup, uh, but he's a good contrarian option to Contreras, uh, but he's not a must-play by any stretch of imagination. If you do want to pay down, then you can go to Dan Vogel, uh, 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 Vogelbach here for the Mets, uh, he's got some high risk, high reward here, but he's really cheap, and he definitely helps you pay up for some other options if you want. And then if you want to pay up a lot, then you can go to Matt Olson, who's hitting the ball extremely well lately. He's got a lot of, he's got six home runs already, and he's just been mashing the ball, so he's definitely worth taking a look at. Excuse me. At second base, we can get uh, Rodolfo uh, Castro for Pittsburgh. Now he can play shortstop as well. Though I don't think you really want to utilize him at shortstop today. He has some upside here, and he's hitting the ball pretty well. Uh, Marcus Simeon is a little bit cheaper. It's cheap enough here on FanDuel that he's worth taking a look at for Texas. Though he's not a must-play by a stretch of imagination, but he's had some really good games in a row, and that definitely gives him some upside, especially with three straight home run games. Uh, then we'll look at Ryan McMahon. Um, for uh, Colorado, he can play second or third base, and he's got some nice utility here. He is somewhat high risk, high reward, because, but he's a lot better in Colorado than he is elsewhere. And then Jeff McNeil for the Mets, uh, he's been somewhat inconsistent to start the season. He doesn't have a home run yet, but he is a guy that you could throw in at second base if you want to save money and go off of Castro as a kind of contrarian option. Uh, then we'll look at third base, and we're going to look at Nolan Arenado. Uh, now, he's definitely viable on the slate as a plus matchup here, and he's definitely rosterable, um, despite the fact he hasn't had a... He's a, it's been a couple games since he's had a couple hits, so uh, I do think he's viable here, but uh, he definitely has some risk involved, but his cheap, he's cheap enough that he's definitely worth taking a look at. Um, then we'll look at Jose uh, Ramirez uh, for... Cleveland, he's got some really nice upside here. He's high risk, high reward, though. He hasn't hit the ball as well as we normally like him to do to make him a viable option on a daily basis, especially at his price point. Uh, Austin Riley is a good contrarian option at this position, and he's not too expensive. He's also hitting the ball pretty well. Um, he's had a bunch of games in a row with hits up until yesterday, so I look for him to get back on track today. 
and he's got some really nice upside here. Uh, then we'll look at uh, Eugenio uh, Suarez at just $3,000. He has some really nice upside in this matchup, and I really do think he's a potential to have a big game. Uh, Seattle is definitely a team that I like to stack on this particular slate. And then Cabrian Hayes, he has some nice upside here, despite the fact that his batting average is not very good. He's been getting on base a lot and getting steals and managing to get RBIs and things, which is really helping him uh, score some fantasy points here on FanDuel. And his price is nice and reduced as well. In the shortstop position, Tommy Edmond is my favorite play, and he's definitely a guy that I think is worth locking in at his just super cheap price, helps him pay up for some other options, and he's got a good, he's got a great matchup here. And into the outfield, we're going to look at Toscar Hernandez. This underpriced here on FanDuel, as per usual. He has been a little bit up and down throughout the start of the season because of his batting average. But he is hitting the ball uh, pretty well, getting hits in most games. And so it's just a matter of him getting some long balls, which will really boost his fantasy production. Uh, then we'll look at AJ Pollock, who I think is a really good value play as well. He's got a really rough batting average, but he has some big-time upside if he draws a start, he's definitely somebody that's worth taking a look at in a plus matchup. Uh, then we'll look at Andrew McCutcheon for Pittsburgh. He's got some nice utility here because his price is not overpriced. And Pittsburgh dev definitely is stackable on the slate. They are somewhat high risk, high reward, but they do have potential in this situation. Corbin Carroll also looks really good here for Arizona. He's been uh, playing pretty solidly to start the season, and he's got a really good matchup here against St. Louis. Uh, and then um, Dylan Carlson, he's another guy I like quite a bit here for St. Louis. He has some really good upside, but he is high risk, high reward. He has not hit the ball particularly well to start the year, uh, but I do think he's viable on the slate. And then finally, Brandon Nemo for the Mets. He's a good option uh, with uh, good base running and uh, potential for stolen bases. Not so much a big home run hitter. At least not so far this season, but uh, he definitely has some upside in this, in this matchup. So with that said, guys, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below, and have a nice day, guys.